So to start my sugar cookie recipe, you're gonna need about a stick and a half of butter, softened or melted, and also about a um, half a cup or two thirds a cup of sour cream. So you're gonna just put the sour cream in with the, with the softened or melted butter and beat that. Um, then you're gonna add one egg and about two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then you want to just go ahead and beat that again on medium speed, just till it's well blended. And once that is combined, then we're gonna add probably a cup and a half or a cup and two thirds of sugar. And also I like to add about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg or just a dash of nutmeg just to kind of, um, kind of round out the vanilla flavor. Then take about three cups of flour and sprinkle in about one cup at a time and beat, beat it together with the other mixture that has been blended. And we're gonna just keep beating until that batter gets thick enough to basically clog those beaters and slow the whole process down. So you want a really nice cookie batter um, to the point where the dough will actually just climb up those um, beaters all the way to the top. So I'll show you what that looks like. So just keep adding the flour and beating until it starts climbing those beaters. So keep beating. I also like to add in a couple pinches of cream of tartar at this point just to um, add to the softness of the dough. And use a spatula to just keep gathering up the dough from around the edges. And you can see here the batter has climbed to the top of the beaters. So it's ready to take out of the bowl and refrigerate for a couple hours or until it kind of starts to stiffen up. So just cover it with saran wrap and stick it in the fridge and then get ready to make your buttercream frosting. So I use about half a bag of powdered sugar and a stick of butter. And we're gonna just melt the butter um, and beat it into the powdered sugar and then add um, into that mixture vanilla and red red um, icing color. So icing colors are usually a little bit darker than like just a regular red food coloring. So if you actually wanna achieve a red icing instead of just pink, <laughs> then um, use an icing color. Same goes for like blue. If you want a darker blue, then you need an icing color as opposed to just the pastel colors that usually are made by food coloring mixed with um, powdered sugar, you know, because the powdered sugar is white, so it's going to lighten up that color of the food coloring. And it's, it's just like in painting when you add a color plus white, like red plus white equals pink. So anyway, you're gonna get a nice red with this red icing color. And I just added a little bit of evaporated milk while I kept adding the rest of that um, powdered sugar until you reach the right consistency. It should be thick, but spreadable. You should be able to spread that um, onto your cookies. And then I just put it into two cups and cover that with saran wrap. Do not refrigerate. Just keep those on the countertop while you are chilling your dough. So we're getting the dough out of the fridge. And this is what your dough should look like after either a couple hours or in my case, I actually chilled it overnight because um, I had a lot to do. I'm just gonna turn that onto a floured surface after your dough has chilled. Sprinkle the top with flour. The dough is kind of hard um, in my case because I actually left it in the fridge overnight because I got busy. But if you just chill it for a couple hours, it won't be quite as stiff. No worries though, if it is stiff, you're just basically going to want to roll it out to be about a half an inch thick. So um, you, you do want these cookies, you know, at least maybe a third to a half an inch thick. Like you want them to be nice and thick because that helps the cookie be soft if it's thicker. So make sure that your dough rolls together and doesn't stick to your rolling pin as it just did with mine. It's gonna mean you're gonna to need to sprinkle a little more flour on there. And you can kind of push the edges together of 
um, any kind of gaps in the dough because once again, this is a stiffer dough than you might be uh, used to working with for cookie dough. If you just chill it for a couple hours though, it won't be quite this stiff again. So you're just gonna roll it out to a nice half an inch or so and then get your cookie cutters ready, whatever shapes you wanna use. I just like circles because it doesn't, a circle doesn't have a bunch of little appendages on it that are going to cook at different rates than the actual um, core of the cookie. So a circle just cooks very evenly. And again, these are very soft sugar cookies, so I don't really like any crunchy um, parts on them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a glass to cut these out with. So I like a wine glass as a cutter just because the glass is very thin and it cuts nice and cleanly. And um, you can just keep kind of swishing the rim of the glass in the flour like this if you want to just to make sure the glass doesn't stick to the cookie dough itself. And then just pop them out and put them on a greased cookie sheet. So I'm gonna actually make two pans at a time. So I have two cookie sheets greased and ready. I just use Crisco to grease my cookie sheets. Um, you can use butter if you want, but I like to save my butter for the actual content of the food. <laughs> and there's lots of butter in these cookies and in the frosting. So just keep cutting these out and filling up your cookie sheets. And we're just going to pop these in a 350 degree preheated oven. So you wanna make sure there's plenty of space in between your cookies on the cookie tray so they don't end up um, kind of rising into each other while they bake. You wanna just keep rolling out the cookie dough, gathering it up and, and rolling it back out. It's actually gonna be easier to roll out as it warms up just a little bit if it has been in the fridge overnight for you. So um, just keep rolling it out and cutting it into those circles and baking those cookies just one pan at a time. Make sure to check them at five minutes and then check them again another three or four minutes. Check them often so that they don't burn because if they get too well done, they're going to get hard. And again, if you want really soft um, sugar cookies, you definitely do not want them to overcook. So again, just keep gathering up your dough. The nice thing about this is that the stiffness is from the butter in this dough. And so that's why with the warmth of your hands, it will actually soften up and be easier to roll with additional rolls um, than it was at the beginning. The stiffness is not from the flour or else it would get harder to roll. So it doesn't have too much flour in it, which is why you can keep re-rolling it with more flour and it doesn't, you know, make the dough um, any stiffer or the cookies any stiffer. So just keep rolling it out until you have all of your dough used up. And it's kind of amazing that um, this dough just works so well and is so versatile uh, for rolling because a lot of times a dough will get like stiffer um, if you add too much flour to it or keep adding flour to it. Like pie dough, for example, is the opposite of this. You wouldn't want to keep doing this with pie dough or it would definitely stiffen up on you. But pie is very different than a cookie. So it's a whole different goal for the end. You don't want a cookie to be like pie dough and you don't want pie dough to be like a cookie. So those cookies have been in the oven for five minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check them real quick and rotate. If you do use more than one um, pan at a time, like I'm using two pans at a time, then make sure to rotate them so that one isn't always on the bottom and one isn't always on the top. So take those cookies out of the oven um, when they are just nice and firm. They don't have to be brown on the on the bottom if they're a nice little golden like this that's fine 
but basically you want them to just kind of fold apart. They're definitely done very moist, very soft. You can see they're soft, but definitely not doughy. They're cooked all the way through. Mm, delicious, even without frosting. <laughs> I have to eat one. Um, so you don't want to frost these until they are cooled off, but you can either set them out on wire racks or just on your cupboard. I have a cupboard top that withstands heat, so I can put, you know, hot things on it. So anyway, those are the, the cookies and they are so delicious, so soft. Definitely will not have a problem eating all these up. Any kids that like soft sugar cookies are gonna love these, especially with my buttercream frosting on top of them. So once they cool, we're gonna frost them, decorate them, and they'll be good to go. So now it's time for the fun part, which is frosting the cookies. So I'm just gonna take my buttercream and spread it across the cookie. I don't like a ton of frosting, but I wanna make sure to coat it really well. And then, after putting that buttercream on the cookie itself, um, I'm going to go ahead and add some sprinkles. Now I like to put the cookie in a, in a cake pan or a bowl or something before I put the sprinkles on just so that the, I don't waste sprinkles. They don't, you know, just fall all over the place. So I'm just sprinkling that with a little bit of clear and red sugar. And then when you wrap these either in a sandwich bag or a saran wrap or on a cookie plate or stack them, it's not going to stick. So if you put a cookie on top of that, it's not going to stick like some frosting and just make a whole big stacked mess. So those are really beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and frost the rest of these and show you the finished product. I am going out to get Langston off the bus and he is coming home from preschool. <laughs> He actually goes to an elementary school. That's why he's riding a whole public school bus. But there he is. Hi, Langston. He's in the front seat. I don't know if you can see him. So right off the bus, he got his cookie and he went for the frosting first. And then he had to go tr jump on his trampoline. But um, these are definitely ready to stack onto a plate. And again, they won't stick to each other because of that. Um, sugar that's sprinkled on top. So they're just very beautiful, very festive. You can add almond flavoring, almond cherry. You can add a little peppermint extract. You could add anything like lemon extract. You can kind of um, extend this or expand this into your own kind of cookie. It's just a great base recipe for a sugar cookie. So uh, Franklin just likes the vanilla sugar cookies, not a lot of, you know, extra stuff. I did actually forget to mention I put in a little, um, probably quarter teaspoon, maybe a third teaspoon of citric acid into the frosting just to like keep it from being just too, too sweet. So you can also just add a tiny little squeeze of lemon juice or some, some other type of um, sourness to that if you want to take off the the edge of the sweetness but rest assured these cookies will disappear quickly because they are delicious that sour cream also adds just a little tang to the cookie dough itself so a great um, sugar cookie for the holidays I hope you try it out and let me know your your thoughts if you do